Watch this. Hard stop. Isn't that a wonderful safety feature? Hello Internet, I'm Guy. Obviously this uh, video is about changing the motor out to a bigger, more powerful motor on my Harbor Freight Mini Mill. This is the original motor, obviously, and I have a little machine shop belt drive add-on kit here, which makes it a lot easier to do this retrofit. So this is the 600 watt motor that I found. Uh, as I mentioned before, it's from a, uh, or designed for a scooter, an electric scooter or an e-bike, I guess. Um, it comes with all the electronics inside, so all I have to do on this wire here is add a speed control and an emergency stop button. And then of course power it from a 24-volt uh, power supply. This is a 650-watt power supply. I'm hoping that will be enough. Turns out it will actually fit in the electronics box on the back of the uh, Harbor Freight Mini Mill. So here we go. I'm going to turn this thing up a little bit. Starting there. Oh, no, you've got to start all the way from zero. Oh, I forgot to turn it on. Turn on the power. Okay, here we go. So it jumps a little bit when it starts, and now running at low speed, it has an enormous amount of torque. It's really a very powerful motor. And I can speed it way up, and then it jumps a little bit to maximum speed. Let's just test that and see what we've got for speed. Here's my tachometer. Uh, 3100, 3129 RPM. Oh, let me just demonstrate the emergency stop here. So run it up somewhat. Press this button and boom. Yeah, I mean, it really stops hard and it locks the shaft. I mean, it's, it's almost frozen. I can move it just a little bit, as you can see. But if I turn off the power, let it settle a little bit. There, now it, it loosens up. So there's two ways of stopping this. I could disconnect the power or I could hit the built-in emergency stop that goes into the circuitry to control the motor. Um, that'll be very handy. I think I'll put a big red mushroom switch somewhere on the front of the machine for emergency stop purposes. So now all I'll have to do is figure out how to mount this onto my machine. And it's basically got those three mounting bolts and nothing else. So uh, that's what I'm going to be working on. Okay, I've been rethinking this and I think what I'm going to do is replace this plate and make two extenders here that go up about an inch higher so that the motor will come in above the drawbar here. So I am going to take these out of here so I can have a look at all of this. Okay, got that out. Get this motor out of the way. Get that out of the way. All right, now I can get the belt off. Now, someone else had recommended uh, a different style of belt, and I put a link to this below. This came from Granger. It's a Dayton belt, and it's more flexible and will should last longer than your classic V-belt. So there's a link to, below to that. So I've cut a, a couple of three-inch lengths of one-inch aluminum rod stock. So now I'm going to make my two-inch long extended standoffs. Put that in. That looks good. So, starting out by facing it off a little bit. Clean up the outside edge. Marking off two inches right there. Oops. Close enough, kind of hitting the jaws, but that's okay. At least I know where it is. And a little bit of cleanup with some WD and Scotch Brite to make it look pretty.
and center drilling for a quarter by 20. And drilling out for a tap drill for a quarter by 20. Okay, I've got my tap follower in the chuck here and quarter by 20. And so parting off at two inches. There we are. So I've marked off a mounting plate for the two risers that will connect to the motor. So this one here will go into this moving adjustable slot right there. And the one on the left will bolt right into the motor hole on the left side of the motor there. So now I'm going to cut everything out on the bandsaw just by following my scribe lines there. This is the outer radius uh, beyond where the adjusting slot will be and the radius that follows the left edge of the motor as seen from the front of the mill. Over to the belt sander I'm just going to sand down to all my scribe lines. I like my big wide. This is a 6 inch wide by 48 inch belt sander, mostly used for woodworking, but of course it sands aluminum really nicely. So I'm just going to bring it down to all those lines and then I'm going to flip it on its edge and sand the edges. Over to the drill press, I'm going to start with the center hole for the motor shaft and then the three uh, mounting holes for the motor itself. Now I've got it clamped down securely because that large unibit step drill will really torque on the plate. So I'm clamping it very securely and going in slowly and carefully. I'm going to be opening up this hole quite a bit for that motor shaft. So now I'm going to countersink all the holes that bolt up into the motor from the bottom. So this is the bottom side of this plate. And I'm double checking the screws each time to make sure they're set deeply enough. Get them all in there, nice and settled in. Yes, so those won't scrape around when this moves. Uh-oh, I just realized I made a mistake here. Where I'm pointing with my finger is where the slot should be for the adjustment pivot on that screw on the left. So, uh, hmm, do-over. I've got a nice new plate here. I'm going to mark this all out and start over. Love the smell of die chem. Some people don't, but boy, I could sit there and smell that all day. Maybe I'm a closet glue sniffer. This is an optical center punch tool that I really enjoy using. So here's the crosshair style uh, optical that I can drop into the center finder and I can center it right there. And if I take this out and put in the punch, I can whack it and there I am. This is the optical center punch that I'm using. It's made by Flexbar and as I mentioned it comes with two optical centers. This one draws a circle around the uh, item you're trying to focus on or center on. This one has an X and then I have two different kinds of um, points here. There's a very shallow point and a steeper point. I tend to prefer this one. Um, this has a cork bottom on it so that it centers and holds its position really well because obviously you have to uh, hold it in place while you remove the lens and then put in the point and then hammer it in. Love this tool. Okay, second time's a charm. So this will now mount like this. Flathead screws, will bolts will go right in there and then there'll be nuts going through into the motor. And then this is the pivot point. So the whole thing will pivot like this. I'm going to have to mill out this slot and then this is the outer cut that I'm going to make when I'm done milling out the slot. So of course I'm going to bolt this down to the milling machine and do a pivot like this which is going to be interesting. So on the mini mill I've um, drilled and tapped a screw 
into a piece of MDF that I've clamped down and now I'm going to drop that in and then this is going to be the pivot point for this movement here so hold on a second let me get that tightened down that's good and snug okay now I'm going to lower the mill head into the starting hole which I already drilled right there now it's bottomed out it's actually cleared through there so now the scary part is I'm going to mill across to here and across to there to use to get this radius that I need so danger danger yep I think that's working out okay Yep, it's looking good so far. I think I'm, I'm going to mill out this side a little bit so I have lots of room for tightening the belt. I'm pretty sure I'm going to be up in this range, but what the heck, let's go a little bit further that way too. Yeah, I think that's going to work. So, just to be clear, I've got a quarter by twenty bolt here and that will drop in and clears pretty nicely because I used a quarter inch milling cutter and there was some vibration that moved that slot just a little bit wider so I think this is going to be just fine. Okay, deja vu. Back to the bandsaw to cut this out. Okay, so now I'm going to clean it up, sand to the lines. Okay, so this assembly is now complete. Um, I did have to go all the way out here because I realized when it flips over, this is the front. So I got dyslexic on that and transposed things. These flathead screws go in here. I'm going to put a uh, screw right in there. Put that right there to index it in place. And then uh, right here, I'm going to put some nylock screws, uh, sorry, nylock nuts right there. Same thing on this side and then this will capture it very thoroughly. Now I've completed the motor mounting plate and so this hole will go onto here. This hole will go into this plate like this and then this will flip over and I'll have an adjustment feature right here with a, a locking knob there. So the next step is to make this plate with the correctly spaced holes that will be countersunk into here so that this can ride on there. Okay, I've just completed making this plate that will sit on top of the two posts that are now two inches, one inch higher than the original one inch posts that were part of the belt drive conversion kit for the mini mill. So this will now sit on here. This will bolt in so this flathead screw will get buried into this uh, interface between the motor and this plate. So that's going to go in like that. This is all just for test fitting purposes. Now, the motor will come over, sit on there. 
go all the way through. And this bolt will pin all the way through to this other post here, theoretically. And that's how it's going to work. So now this, once I tighten that bolt down, this head will pivot. Something's hitting. Oh dear. Now what? What is hitting? This needs to move. Oh, of course. Right. Okay. So I need to open up this hole right here. Okay, problem solved. Basically what I did was I drilled another hole here and then connected them with a uh, Dremel uh, carbide cutter. So now this will swivel like that. That's what we want. So let's do a reassembly here. Put the motor aside for a moment. I'm going to put a flathead screw in here first. So then what we can do is put this original handle back in here. That'll thread in there and be able to lock it down and I can move this to tighten the belt. Okay, so this is the test assembly. I'm going to take off the old standoff here. That's the original one. That's a quarter by 20 thread. Put the new one on. I'm going to have to get a wrench onto that one. And then I'm going to take this one off, which has a flathead screw in there. Okay, that is off. That has a flathead screw buried under there, and I just don't want to take this whole thing apart. So this has got a M6 thread in that I did. Okay, I've got those tightened. Now I'm going to take my new plate, set this up here, and drop in the flathead screw that's going to get buried down into that standoff there. Right there, so put that in. And then this hopefully will line up with the motor. So let's put the motor on there. That's going to sit right there like that. And this bolt on the left side is going to hopefully just drop right in there. Okay, I got that tightened up. So that bolt is now firmly in uh, that pillar on the left, or the post. So now the question is, does the locking arm fit right there? And it looks like it will. So let me just get that set in there. And there we go. All right. So now that will eventually lock down, and this can tighten the belt there. So. The only thing I don't have is the pulley adapter to get the motor connected to that pulley right over here. But you see the idea. So that's the next step. Sneak peek, sneak peek, don't look, don't look. It's, it's actually finished, but we've got the other half of the video to watch yet. So if you're enjoying this content, um, please give me a thumbs up and a like, and subscribe if you'd like to see more of this content. Um, I'm a new YouTuber and I'm going to be releasing videos pretty much every week, at least one, possibly two. That may change. I'm not going to stay to a fixed schedule, but enjoy the video. Uh, if you want to skip ahead to the end and see how it runs, go ahead. If you want to enjoy the journey, I've got lots more to show. So the first logical step is to face off the end here. looks good. So now I'm just going to start a part line right here so I know where that edge is. of motorizing the carriage is I can just reverse whenever I want to, which is really convenient for a cut like this. And of course I can stop and start anytime. The motor shaft is 12 millimeter diameter, so I'm going to start with the center drill, of course, and then since I don't have a 12 millimeter drill bit, I'm going to go up to a 15 32nd and possibly bore out from there. We'll see how it fits on the shaft when I get there.
Okay, so I'm up to 15 30 seconds, which is just a little shy of 12 millimeters. Here we go. That's to the full depth of the motor shaft. Okay, so a quick check, check to see the motor shaft will fit. Oh, it's just right on the hairy edge of going in, so I just need to take a fraction off with the boring bar, so let me get that set up. Yeah, that's not enough, let's go a little bit more. I just don't want to overdo this and have a loose shaft. still sticking just right at that one point there. Okay, let me go a little bit more. That feels good. Oh yeah, that's, that's good tolerance. Okay, so we've got that hole taken care of. Okay, so now I'm going to mark this off a little bit for the pulley. And the pulley is going to be right at the end here. And that's uh, about a quarter inch diameter there, so let me just set that up. Right there, so I'm going to follow in from the original cut right there and that's where the total width of the V will be. So then I figure I'm going to use a parting tool to get in the first part of the cut and uh, wing it from there. Well I was going to use a parting tool to start the V but then I realized I have a cutter that has a 15 degree uh, angle on it and I have the reverse of that. So I'm just going to do that with these uh, carbide cutters. I think that'll work just fine. So basically I just need to go 0.186 deep with this cutter. Let's see how that plays out. Okay, let's check the belt. Um, yep, yeah, that grips really nicely. That's my first uh, belt pulley and it worked out pretty good. I'm surprised actually. <laughs> All right, I'm just gonna face off the bottom end and this weird looking pulley is done. Now I'm just going to clean up that outer edge a little bit because it's kind of sharp looking. No one will ever see this surface, but that you will see and that looks good. So I just realized that I need to bring this area down to about one inch diameter in order for it to fit through the motor mounting plate. So I'm going to be aggressively working my way down using my carriage feed and I've set an automatic stop at this point so I can just drive back and forth and increment in as you will see shortly. Okay, so I've got the pulley mounted on the motor. The motor is all mounted onto the brackets that I've built onto the extended standoffs and I can adjust the motor tension, belt tension rather, like this and then lock it down just as it was with the original motor. Um, I've got this adjustable uh, slot here. 
So it's looking really good. Um, let's see. Yeah, I can spin that. All right, I'm going to go uh, hook this up to a power supply and run the mill for the first time. Okay, I've got the power supply hooked up and I have the speed control here so I can adjust this and there's the tachometer. So starting very slowly, there it goes, weird sound, but that's the sound of the motor. Thirteen hundred, fourteen hundred, and then it jumps. There we go, twenty-two hundred, which is kind of what I expected. That's the ideal top speed. Now, there's also an emergency stop button I can push, which stops it dead. That motor is locked. And the only way to restart is to turn the knob all the way down, and then start again. Well, this thing makes weird sounds. I think I need to tension that belt a little bit. Let me try that. Okay, let's try that. And emergency stop. Isn't that great? Boy, talk about emergency stop. Just dead stop. This thing takes a while to catch up and it looks like it's kind of displaying funny numbers, so forgive that. This is where it's weird though, it just starts kind of noisy, cogging almost. The good part though is all of this is working. The belt is working, the pulley is working. Uh, I am pretty happy with the whole mounting system here actually. So, looking at the control box in the back here, take that last screw off, be careful not to lose those. What we've got is the main control board here, and then this little unit right here, which I'm not sure you can see in the camera, but um, there's a little circuit board that runs the fan, there's a little tiny fan. Um, so, I'm going to now take this out. So I've taken out the original control board that was going to all these wires to the front panel. Don't need that anymore. I also took out this little 12 volt module that powers the fan. I'm going to steal some power from over in the uh, front there where I'm using power to run my tachometer and I just bring wires in and run 12 volts to this. Um, but all of these signal wires are no longer necessary because basically AC power is going to come in here go into the power supply, the 24 volt power supply for the motor, and then just go straight out of here to the motor. Um, here's that wire here, so that's just going to come in right in here as before, so I'm just going to take this off. It's pretty daunting, um, not for the faint of heart, but I'm going to wiggle my way through it. I'm a skilled electrical engineer, not all of you may be, but I think if you got into it and you could figure it out yourself, just take your time. So in the original control box, I don't need all of the control signal wires that went over to the control board on the back of the mill. Um, I don't really need a pilot light on the front, and it turns out that the potentiometer on the back of this original speed knob is exactly the right value to use with the new speed control, so that's fine. I'm going to move the fuse to the back because I'm not bringing in AC power here. I'm going to bring it in at the back in the back electronic box. So then what I can do is put my uh, emergency stop button right here, so everything's just right here. Now, I originally had a start and stop buttons here um, that I had wired in so that I could start and stop by leaving the knob uh, at the set speed that I wanted. I'm going to have to forego that now because this system will not allow me to do that. Um, if you just apply power to the new electronics, it won't start until you turn the knob all the way off and then bring it back up again. So that's fine. I'm going to have to live with that. This is my tachometer, by the way. So um, I'm going to reconfigure all of this, get rid of all of this, and simplify. It's going to be interesting. Okay, clean sweep. I've got all the electronics out. I've got the speed pot out. I've got the light out, the fuse out. Now, coming out of the motor, there are two wires. One is the 12-volt wire that will go over to the power supply in the back. And then this wire, which I'll feed through a, a strain relief and come down into here. And there are three wires that go to the potentiometer that will mount right here, and two wires that go to the emergency stop button that I'll mount right here. I might put something bigger in there, I'm not sure. 
but uh, it's going to really clean up the whole electronics once I get done with this. It's going to be going to be nice. So I've decided to use the old stop button that I had from my previous design and put it right in here. The original speed knob will go back here. This is a knob that I made a long time ago. Uh, solid brass, woohoo. Then I'm going to replace this plate because I had to cut this out to add my old stop buttons, start and stop buttons right here. I'll make a new aluminum plate or something to, to cover this back up again. So right now I'm just going to make a big hole for this huge switch. I do like soft plastic. So let's see, a couple more drill sizes up. One trick I have when using these step drill bits is I put a magic marker line right there so I know which hole size to stop at. So let's see how this works out. Yeah, see I can see that line is right there. I've got one more step to go, or two. Yep, just buried that dark line there. You can see that. And the switch will go in there with a little fooling around. I might have to deburr that a little bit. Oh yeah, beautiful. Okay, that's going to sit in there very nicely. Okay, so now I have the uh, potentiometer and the emergency stop switch wired in. So I've got wires coming in from the cable from the motor, directly from the motor. Three wires go to this, two wires go to this. Couldn't be simpler. Nice tidy inside box here. Now, um, I had cut this out to add my start and stop box here, and so I'm going to have to make a new aluminum cover plate, or acrylic maybe, um, to cover that back up again for safety, of course. I plugged this hole, which was the other big hole that went over to the motor, or the signals in the back, I think. And I don't need a fuse on the front, I'm going to put that in the back. So this is all nice and tidied up now and secure. Here's the wiring inside the back. This is the box on the back of the column. Keep in mind, this is not a motor speed controller anymore. This is a 24 volt DC 6.5 amp power supply. So it's just providing 24 volts out of here going over to the motor. The signals are all sent over to the front panel as we saw before. Now, um, I also, this is a 12 volt fan that was part of the original design and I've spliced on some wire and tuck that in there and feed it out and go over to my 12 volt um, systems that are on my, uh, oh let's see, I've got the ring light, I've got the tachometer, I've got a bunch of 12 volt stuff so I can just rim this over there and tap that off later. The original power cord comes in at the bottom right here and goes hot, neutral and ground and the ground wire comes around over here, an extra ground wire and goes over to the ground lugs in the back of the box here. That's really important to have that grounded for safety. Um, I am not using a fuse on this box at the moment because this is all plugged into a power strip that has a fuse. So I may revisit that and put one somewhere in here, but there's not a lot of room for a fuse. I was thinking about trying to put one here, but then it would prevent you be being able to get this out and service it. So, living dangerously. Ha. So here's the completed installation. So watch this. Can you hear the cogging sound? Anyone who rides an e-bike or an e-scooter will know that sound. If you're running really slow, you hear this weird cogging sound because the magnets and the rotors inside there kind of step along. So now let's look down at the fly cutter that I have down here. You can see it's turning very, very slowly. Now watch what happens. It'll go really fast and it accelerates very quickly. This is 2200 RPM roughly and that's 2500 was the original speed based on the gear ratio or the belt ratio of the little machine shop belt upgrade. So now, watch this. Hard stop. Isn't that a wonderful safety feature? So I'm going to dial that back down again. The only way to restart it is to turn it up. And you can get to speed very, very quickly. You don't have to wait for it to spool up like the old design. So I'm just thrilled with this. The nice advantage is you'll have tons of power at the low speed range because this is an electronically speed controlled motor, not like a brush motor. This is a, um, these types of motors inherently have more power. So I've gone from a nominal 350 watt motor 
to a 600 watt motor, which is a significant advantage, especially at the low RPM where it can deliver more torque than a brush motor. I am really tickled with this. So here's all the parts that I removed. The original motor from the Harbor Freight Mill, parts from the kit for the belt drive adapter from Little Machine Shop. This is the signal cable that went from the front control box to the rear control box. Miscellaneous parts, a whole bunch of little odds and ends here, including the fuse and bits of wire. This was the original speed control knob and the original um, pilot light that lets you know it's running, which I don't need. This was a 12 volt power supply for the fan and the uh, control module for the motor. If anyone wants any of these, uh, send me a message and you can have them for a reasonable price. Any price, any reasonable offer will be accepted. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed sharing the journey with me as I stumbled through this process. As you can see, it turned out pretty well and I'm really pleased with the result. So stay tuned to my channel, um, subscribe if you want to. I've got a lot more videos coming out soon. I'm gonna do about one a week, as I mentioned earlier, and maybe two. So uh, if you subscribe, you'll get to see them or you can click the notification bell and please give me a like, I need them. Thank you.